If she want to be a freak, sell it on the weekend. Ever since I was a little girl and he was the voice of the hot one in Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I love it. Oh, he'd stick his dick. Yeah, he, he'd put his dick on that bus. Mm-hmm. I have to fight them. I have to face them alone. And they're like, no, you can't. There must be another way. <laughs> then you meet my favorite character. And I don't know why. I don't, maybe I have an alien kink. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hello, welcome to Click and Flick, the podcast where we click your flick <laughs> anytime. We flick your click and, all the time. And until you're satisfied. Oh, <laughs> and really like what we do is talk about movies and video games. And we love them, but we do give them a. Uh, our sole opinion is based on nothing but hot air in our brains. And exactly the hottest air. Oh, baby, it's so hot. It's like, mm, Warm. Boom, where'd you get that air? It's so hot. And I'm like, I just blowed out my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I just blowed out my butt. All natural. And I'm baby. talking about movies. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, all flicking in this podcast is consensual. Ooh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and all of today, all of all of this episode is really, it's just our general common knowledge. We are not historians. We are Thank not you. critics. Thank you. There might be a lot of like this ticket, 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 looking things up for years yes. if we want to. But to be honest, we are just kind of having a shoot oh, the shit the episode because- yeah. This is our finale, a <laughs> last episode, right? The season finally of yes. Click and Flick. Click and Flick, yeah. We're ending out the year. 19 episodes. Almost Ooh. 20, I think. I know, right? If you count the trailer, Oh, no, right? no. <laughs> this will be the 20th episode, I believe. So we're excited to yeah. have had this year. Of watching mm-hmm. all these movies and video games and talking about them and laughing, will... crying, shitting, vomiting, shitting, vomiting, put it in a blender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> quotes, it, you name it, we did it here. Yeah. Every episode. And you were there to witness it, guys. It's all thanks to <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> If you have watched every single episode, you need to let us know. You need to email us. Yeah, email us. And tell us. And you'll get a mm-hmm. prize. We'll say your names in the season two Yee. first episode, which will be next first year. First episode. Yes. We'll be back in 2022. Catch us there. Um, Hopefully, it'll be a different year. <laughs> A good year. Uh, It is an even year, so hopefully. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Is 22 a lucky number? I would say so. I'd say, I. yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling feeling 22. Mm. See, Taylor Swift's up. Yeah. Wait, is that Taylor Swift? Yeah. (laughs) Good job. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I don't know Taylor Swift that well. (laughs) Uh, uh, but uh yeah so so anyway thank you for sticking around if you have been here for 20 episodes awesome if you're new welcome we'll catch you next year but yeah. you can binge on the whole first season now yeah you'll have plenty of time <laughs> plenty of time uh, um you know this episode's special because we're going to be reviewing the cult classics of both video games and movies. Yes. Super special. We decided um, to go out with a bang and just talk about something we don't have uh, that much knowledge yeah. on. We're just kind of <laughs> looking around and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, though, the common general knowledge of these cult classics, it, it, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to say. And it's yes. impressive and great. 
So I think we are beginning with the cult classics of the video game world. Yes. So what do you have for me? Hit me with your list. Okay. Hit me with, hit you with my best shot. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just wanted to briefly touch on the history of video games. I'm sure most people know, at least I would assume so, that Pong was the very first I want to say popular arcade video game to really be released and consumed by a general mass of people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, that game actually from Atari Pong came out November 29th, 1972, which is today. The day we're recording it's, it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my so, God. 1972. Right? So 80s, 90s, 2000s. 49. 10, 20. So it'll be 50 next year. I know. In a year from right? today as of we're, the day we're recording. Yep. Wow, yep. 50. That's what I said. When I saw that, I almost started crying. I'm not even yeah. going to lie. Did you um, play Pong as a kid? I did not. Uh, I wasn't allowed to touch the video game consoles in the house because uh, <laughs> my dad was a little... Mm. Uh, he was a little prissy about like, his shit being touched about it yeah i yeah. i see that i see that yeah um, um i was gonna say pong i played pong as a kid and oh, you did because i had a little plug-in atari um <laughs> emulator thing that would just plug into your tv yeah and yeah, so yeah. i had like a few um atari games on it but the pong one i figured out the exact place to put your like pong piece that yeah. the pattern would always win. Like, you just had to stay there, and you would beat the game every time. Like, the ball would naturally go, and the computer would hit it, like, three times, and then miss. <laughs> oh! If you just kept your, like, little guy at the right exact angle. So... That's funny. I don't know how I figured it out, and, like, my siblings didn't know that that was like the trick. So they all would be like super impressed when I would just They're like, all like, you're a God. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I was definitely the <laughs> punk princess of the house. Yes. <laughs> Hell yes. You but know, I don't know I, if that would work on like every version of Pong because it was definitely like a coding error error in that game. So like in my maybe. little system, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> That's. F I'm glad you actually played Pong mm -hmm. I, because I didn't as a kid. I played it later, obviously. But um, the I, what I wanted to say after Pong 2 was that Space Invaders was the next. It was the second mm. biggest arcade game to come out. And that was um, that was by the company Midway. And. I guess if you really Midway, look, like the furniture company, <laughs> that's where I my know. table. <laughs> Midway, they shout started out, not with a sponsor. Video games, and then the women of the furniture. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> I, I don't know. I I would be very impressed. Probably not. If right. Um. Space Invaders did come out on in 1978. So I, I don't know about you, but when I hear that year, when I hear 1970 anything, mm -hmm. I it's hard for me to believe it's almost 50 years ago. It, it blows my mind. Right. So. Right. Because growing up, it was like that was like 30 <laughs> years ago was the yeah. 70s. Yeah. And now it's like uh, 30 years ago was the 90s now. <laughs> It's it's insane to think that we went from Pong almost 50 years ago to VR virtual reality. Oh, my gosh. To phasmophobia on the VR, which I will never do. <laughs> yeah, to literally pissing and shitting your pants in 2020. No. 2020. Yeah. Going from literally, Crazy. they're all, look at, you know, table tennis? Like, now you can play it on your TV. <laughs> It's it's just we're in a crazy day and age now that's yeah. just like awesome. And then um going down the list, I'll go through this kind of quickly. Was um in 1980, Pac-Man came out, another arcade classic, um, by Namco. And then 1981, Nintendo introduced the first 
story-based video game, which was <gasps> Donkey Kong. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. It's... I, okay. I was actually really surprised to hear that Nintendo broke that barrier of first story based game. Here you go. But it's 2D, obviously, but right. still really neat. Yeah, I love that, though. Um, yeah. So the folklore that I've heard about Donkey Kong, and I don't know if you mm-hmm. can verify this or if it came up at all for you in your research, yeah. but that it originally was named Monkey Kong. And the character in Japanese for monkey is very similar to donkey. And when it was translated in America, the people who were translating it, apparently they um, just mistranslated it. And it became Donkey Kong um, because the characters were Americans. Yeah, that's what I heard. So, you know, if that's true or not, that's the old wives tale. The boys on the block told me that in third grade. Really? <laughs> yeah. Shout out. <laughs> I know that Mario, that we know now of Mario, um, his name in that game was Jumpman. So his name wasn't Mario until later on. And it was even like before Jumpman, I think it was like uh, Carp. Oh, it was something weird. Mm. I, I should have wrote it down, but it was like something like Carpenter Man or. Or it wasn't plumber? plumber. It was something no. else. Oh. I don't. I don't think it was plumber. <laughs> <laughs> but really crazy. It was. It was a really cool like understanding uh, series of events that led to Nintendo. I was just uh-huh. like awesome. Wow. Um, <clears throat> and then the legendary game of Zelda comes out in 1986 on the NES, and that snowballs. You know, like that series and franchise has snowballed so much. It is like, that, oh, literally taken on a life of its own. Right? Like, wow. Holy crap. In, you know, those are just to name some of the few. Like, right. I, I, I stuck to mostly story based games, but I think, like, I would say probably the one of the major contenders to Zelda as far as like, franchise games is mario you know mm-hmm. what i mean like those are definitely oh, yeah. the top two that yeah. like will always have a name in video game history always and, well, in, you can and ask- in video game future in my opinion right you know what i mean right um uh, you could literally ask anybody on the street do you know of zelda do you do you wouldn't even mm-hmm. have to say legend of zelda but you would just say zelda yeah or mario and people would know exactly so yeah i Definitely a classic. And then um, I don't know if you have any, because like I said, growing up, I didn't have a whole bunch of access mm-hmm. to the game consoles. I had access to a PS1. I had access to an N64. And then I had um, the SNES. I didn't have a Dreamcast and all of that. My dad did, but I never played it. Uh-huh. Um, so my first real console that was mine and it was in my room Uh was a GameCube. Oh, yeah. I I love that thing. I still have it. I love it. I didn't have video games growing up either, except for that little Atari thing. Um, uh because my family was super poor, but my friends had video games so like yep. the boys across the street rocky and randy you know shout outs again randy <laughs> <laughs> yes. they would we would play obviously like mario kart we would play tony hawk yeah. we would play um s- the star wars one. Oh, the battle f- battlefront yes yeah yeah mm-hmm. but, um and then we would play and then for one year for christmas my mom's friend sent us a PC. And so we were like, oh my gosh. Oh. And so we could, could play, we played Tomb Raider and The Sims and Frogger 2. <laughs> yes. Um, and then my friends, my friends from church would let us borrow their N64 and Super Nintendo consoles um, every now and then so we could play. And then we would always play when we would go to their house. So yeah. I didn't own yeah. my own video console. Until I was like 13 or 14. 
and it was an old mm-hmm. N64 that we bought off eBay. Yes. That came with like yes. six controllers and like 12 games <laughs> for like Back then it was probably bucks. cheap as dirt. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I went to, fun fact, I went to all pawn shops for all of my gaming needs. Yes. All the pawn shops, like yes. memory cards, controllers, you yes. name it. I was there with them. And then I didn't get a GameCube until I was an adult and had my own apartment. <laughs> I think I played that GameCube with you. You did. And you did. got me a memory card for it that I accidentally threw away because <laughs> it was in the Christmas, like, you're all, did you get the memory oh, card no. at the bottom of the back house? Like, what? And then I had to dig through my dumpster <laughs> outside. <gasps> and like, no! The apartment yeah. complex. But I got the memory <laughs> card. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, girl, you have to. Um, <laughs> and so I tried, I, I should have done a lot uh, more research ahead of time as far as like, not research, just polling, just figuring out what people thought were cult classics mm-hmm. of video games. Um, but I got a few good answers today, uh-huh. thanks to my Discord. Shout out to my Discord. But, At Kita64, um, go follow. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it um, right here. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I wanted to start off by saying Minesweeper, Solitaire, those games were my childhood. I love those games so much, by the way. I I would consider those cult classics, okay? Yeah. I think Just Minesweeper, saying. for anyone, it was like, I would say like 70% of the people I saw playing it were just clicky buttons. And yes. then you like, yes. when you saw someone who knew how to play, you were like, oh my fuck. You know how to play that yeah. game? <laughs> how? <laughs> Teach me. <laughs> so like my my abuelo taught us how to play that game really and he um yeah so he was just like it's really easy you just have to count um like the squares and see how many bombs and uh-huh. so i would always play on beginner but watching him play was like you know that he played it all day at work <laughs> you're right right exactly i played at my dad's work and it was on this like old computer oh my god it throws me back thinking about it but (laughs) yeah i just wanted to mention that before i go down the list because the list is lengthy okay and i mean i'm touching on on (laughs) yes i'm just touching on the list of of cult classics that people have given me okay and some of my own so okay i know there's way more out there don't hate on me don't at me okay yeah, or like email it to us and we'll review it <laughs> yeah email <laughs> email me your us your list of all your cult classics exactly. Um, exactly. so to start off we have asteroids uh that was uh, a runner-up with space invaders yes for sure. earthworm jim earthworm and double S- yeah earthworm jim was uh, that was, hold on, Wasn't on. Oh, it's gonna hurt my brain to try and think about it. Wasn't on the. Oh, it was on Sega Genesis. That's what. It oh, was. okay. Sega Genesis. Um, and then 007 Golden Eye on N64. That was mine in particular. Oh, I loved that game. Right. Oh my god. Right. That's probably the only first person shooter I've ever had fun playing. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you could spend hours on that game for it some was reason. So fun. All the games after that, the boys got mean. I don't know what happened. They did. Oh my god, you're so right. <laughs> but that Whoa. game, I had fun playing. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Oh my god. Um Sims is big heart. I don't care if anybody wants to fight me over that, I will die on this hill. Yeah. Sims is a cult classic. Okay. It's, yeah, definitely like <laughs> it lives up to today. Like it is yeah. been it's probably the most expensive game you can get if probably, you buy the entire like game. All of yeah. the- expansion packs and everything and yeah how far they've come in like advancements i remember playing the sims and then when the sims 2 came out 
I was like so impressed. I was like, look how far you can yeah. zoom in on them now. You can go yeah. all the way to like their waist or something like <laughs> it was like it was it was, it was epic. revolutionary. And then mm-hmm. Sims 3 was like another huge was like a huge step and then Sims 4 was just a total like reset of even gameplay. So yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan of same. anything that's not my life. Just <laughs> <laughs> any simulator? <laughs> yes, give me. Um then Crash Bandicoot was a big one. I got oh. that answer from a lot of people. Crash- I played Crash. I played Crash Bandicoot at my dentist because my kids, Ooh. my children's dentist had a, had each dentist chair had a big, one of those big old thick square TVs, like hanging yes. upside down on top of yes. you. And so you would just be like, ah, uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> what a badass dentist. Oh my God. Yeah, that's that amazing. was like pretty, that was like the only, one of the, one of the best things about dental hygiene. Right? <laughs> crash the kids would definitely go more if they had access to Wi-Fi and video games nowadays, you know? Yeah, and now it'd be even easier with, like, flat screens and switches and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, for sure. That's why I'm saying. My dentist was on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember going top to the tooth. dentist. Top tooth it, guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Five stars. Um, Metroid was next. Metroid, I got quite a few answers for as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that game. Okay. Yeah. And then one that slipped my mind in the minute somebody said it, I was like, oh my God, yeah. I never played it, but it's Mega Man. And <sighs> Mega Man's like right up there with Sonic. Like people idealize yes. this character and just like, you know. True. Back then, kids were like, I'm running as fast as Sonic. And you're like, oh, my God. Yeah, you are. You know, like, <laughs> it was just. And you're like, in your head, you're like, oh, my God, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> we were, you know, we were wild kids, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, so Mega Man. Then we have Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, both of which. um I'm not sure if they've made a separate game for Street Fighter that's not an arcade game, but they have arcade um, uh, Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. I know that for sure. And they and then they have separate games as well. Yeah. Um, I love. I remember Mortal playing Kombat. those games at the bowling alley because of the yeah because of the yeah. arcade games. Oh yeah. man! Oh my love gosh. It. Did you uh, play Frogger? Was the next one? Oh. <laughs> what were you gonna say? I was gonna say if you ever played Marvel versus or not Marvel, it's a uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC no, universe. I never played it. Mm-mm. It was pretty fun. I, I liked playing um, like fighting with like Wonder Woman and Batman and stuff. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. I I wish they would make like an. Ad- an Avengers one that wasn't like, I know they came out with a guardians of the galaxy game recently, which I'm going to have to play. Uh-huh. Um, but one that's but more wish, Avengers. Yeah. Like, I think it would be cool. Like what if they did DC versus Avengers? That people would might, be cool. People might rage over that. I don't know. <laughs> people might freak out, but what if they do Incredibles versus Avengers? Oh, so they're Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. Oh, my God. <laughs> you saw that they came out with a Smash game or a, a Smash-like game that's Nickelodeon characters? Yes. Yeah. That's man. cool. Yeah. That's that was exciting. Cool. Did you ever play? There was this video game, and I was talking about it to my other friend recently, but it was a Mario Kart style game, but it was all Disney characters, and it was set at the Magic Kingdom. So each level was a different ride. And I played no. it on my, it was a really old game. I think I had it for Game Boy Color. Um, wow. And I think there was also, I think my friend said that she had a version of it for a GameCube. So I think they definitely even made more like like sequels to it. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I can't remember the name of it. It's like, di- like, mag- like Disney Kingdom Racing or something. But it was like almost exactly like Mario Kart. 
and you just could be like a Chip Disney and Dale characters. or Minnie Mouse <gasps> and like yeah. <laughs> I love that. It was cute. Man. It was super cute. Yeah. I'm going to have to check it out for sure. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, we we have Frogger and then we had Sonic of course right after that. <sighs> a lot of these I have not played, mind you. Um and Primal Rage, which was kind of a beat em up okay, style okay. game as well. Uh I'm I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce this right, but this was a huge discussion in the Discord. It was Darius or Darius. I, I don't know how you pronounce it. Hmm. But huge, like a bunch of people were like, Oh my god, I remember that. And I'm like I was uh, I, I was kept in a closet my whole life. No, I'm just kidding. Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Oh my god. We're obsessed. Um, we are. At we are. Podcast. It's okay. <laughs> if we don't have you quoting that TikTok <laughs> by the end of watching one of our episodes, I'll be highly disappointed. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Lost Vikings was one of those cult classics that was recommended by my friend Rex. And then Crazy Taxi was mine because Crazy Taxi, every time... See, I didn't have it for a console. I played it at the arcade. Um, mm, okay. Crazy Taxi was the shit. Okay? <laughs> you, like, were living your best ska dreams. Like, you were the alternative ska embodiment... When you were playing that game. So you were just... Uh, did you play it? No. I have no idea. Oh, oh my God. I'm okay, just so delighted that you're so, like, overjoyed right now. Talking about... I spent many an hour on this game. Um, and I think what was cool about it is that you weren't in this, like, arcade game shell. You literally stood up and... Um, You were, I think you were in a car, like in a car seat and Mm. you just had the steering wheel and the gas pedals and you would get in this taxi and your whole point and job was to like Uber people, taxi people from place to place. And you had to get there within a certain amount of time. Mm. And every person had like a story or like, like a thing. They'd be like take me to the beach and then it'd be some girl with like pink hair and she's like oh my god you just hit that person or like oh my god can you drive better like it was it was just it was the best so stupid judgmental. game yeah <laughs> but they would play the best ska music i would oh say god, like yes. a mix of ska and alternative music it was that's awesome oh love crazy god. taxi um the next one on the list is Mist. That was recommended by Kendra. <clears throat> Quite a few other people had mentioned it too, or at least knew about it. <clears throat> I had never heard of it though. Um, and then Pokemon, Pokemon Red. Mm. Okay. Pokemon is oh. a long, like charging franchise that stuck it out on that Game Boy. And I, I'm pretty sure it came yeah. out on something else, didn't it? But. <sighs> Um, I remember Pokemon from the Game Boy, personally. Yeah, same. I played Pokemon. Um, I actually played it on PC on an emulator online, just some random website. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. But who was your first starter? It was always Squirtle. Always. <laughs> I, I, like, I never... Well, I may Cute. have chose... Uh, I maybe picked Charmander, like, once. Mm. Once. Who was yours? Uh, Bulbasaur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Gotta love Bulbasaur. You know yeah. what? There's something to say about your uh, your starting Pokemon. First of all. <laughs> I want to make Elias do it. And yes. Just see what he chooses. Like have like little plushies or have him play the mm-hmm. game. Both. With the little. Because I've seen like um, parents with when their kids are first starting to like walk and stuff. They like set uh-huh. up their little plushies. They're like, pick your starter. And they like walk it's to whoever so they want. It's so cute. <laughs> I did it with um with the Harry Potter houses and he chose oh, you red did. in particular. Yeah. Mm, brave. Brave. Very brave. brave. 
courage. <laughs> Purge. Chivalry. Uh, <laughs> chivalry. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, after Pokemon was Metal Gear Solid. Um, a solid, I believe it's a Japanese um, uh, story-based game that rephrase it's it originated in japan and their stories are just always prime time then diablo and then keith made me put echo down i never played it but echo is apparently this dolphin game where you would go around and make dolphin noises and it would like echo it was a really cute game hmm. apparently it was super cute I've when he showed me the picture i've never heard of that that's interesting mm-hmm. Um, Spider-Man and Venom Max Carnage. That game in particular was, um, the Spider-Man, I don't know if you knew this, but Spider-Man was capitalized as a video game for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Those games came out pretty much on every single console since the dawn of time, it feels like. So that was obviously on a cult classic list. And then... The last one is Yoshi's Island. (gasps) Yoshi's Island. I never played personally. Did you play it? Um, Yes. I played it on the the remake when they came out for the 3DS. Oh, Oh, cute. Oh, wait. I do have memories of playing it with one of the other neighbor kids down the block. Yes. Really? Um, Yeah. Oh. Yoshi's Island, I was told from a lot of people, like, it helped me read when it came out. Like, it helped some people, you know, just as kids, like, fully mm-hmm. enjoy a video game um, that yeah. was beneficial to them in the long run. You know, people were so... Yeah. People, I've, especially in the 90s, were so anti, don't watch TV, don't m- yeah, numb your brain on yeah, exactly. video games. So They were like, even today, people think, like, screens are, like, the evil, like, force that's going to ruin humanity when yeah no humans already kind of sucked y'all <laughs> legit yeah like, we, if you, we do. like look at history we never really were that uh nah moral <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. i don't really have any cute like ideas like you do for for your list but um i have a couple games i played as a kid Oh, yes. That I'd Tell like me. to add to your list. Um, so let me know if you ever played on the PC. We had Pajama Sam. Heard of Pajama Sam, yes. You were like this little kid who had to like, you were afraid of the dark, so you had to have your flashlight, but you had to go um, through like a treehouse to find like different clues. But the darkness oh. was like the bad guy. So you had to go to Darkness's house. <laughs> oh my God, Darkness's house. Yes. Um, and then the other game was called Putt Putt and Fatty Bear. So Putt Putt, it was actually two separate games then had like a collab. So the Putt Putt game was like this little purple car. And then there was like this game, Fatty Bear. And it was just like a hot bear that was like really sexy. (laughs) Oh, oh, wow. And they taught you about like mixing colors and stuff. Oh, yes. (laughs) But that was like along with Pajama Sam. Um, and then the other game I wrote was Backyard Baseball. Did you ever hear of that game? I have heard of Backyard Baseball. So I, I... I may have played it, but I don't recall. I would play that game all the time. And um, it made me really feel like I liked baseball. I was wrong, though. It, <laughs> <laughs> I liked the game. Sure. But then when I... Started experiencing different parts of baseball in real life. I was like, this isn't like the video game. I'd rather just sit at home. (laughs) I feel that. Oh, my. Mm. I, I, there was a few games that I played. I played, I played the Toy Story game when it came out on N64. Um, and I loved it. I was obsessed. My dad must have gotten it for me, got it for me. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, I couldn't put it down. I was obsessed. And what about um, Banjo Kazooie? I didn't play Banjo Kazooie. I meant to put that on the cult list. See, and now that on the Switch Online they're doing N64 games, mm-hmm. I 
really, really hope they come out with Banjo Kazooie because that They've game was so fucking fun. That game was yeah. like that game was intense. I loved mm. it. I had I was like just as enthralled playing that game as I was playing Ocarina of Time. Right. Except that game was like silly and goofy. You know what I mean? But yeah. at the same time, like the adventure aspect was still and the puzzle solving aspect was still there. It was top notch. Right. I loved that game. It didn't sure. feel as pressure uh, as pressure. What's the word I'm looking for? As pressurized? As much. What the hell? Pressure? As much tension? Yeah, just as much pressure <laughs> as Ocarina of Time. Yeah. But yeah, for sure. I feel that. Yeah. And that's pretty much my list. I sure there's plenty more I could talk about, but yeah. I mean when you when you boil it down to what people have played, those really were the answers the that classics. Yeah. Just the classics. Like you know, I to be fair, I was born in ninety four, so I didn't have a whole lot of experience prior to that and games started <laughs> coming out. That year. I didn't really start gaming <laughs> until 95. <laughs> when I was okay. one years old. <laughs> I could put my pull-ups on by myself. Thank you. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. It's and just... then knock out some noobs. <laughs> <laughs> I was wild on 007. Watch out. But, yeah, that uh, that completes my list. On me. I'm ready. On to cult classics. So, for films, I kind of went with, I just have like a whole bunch of lists too. So we'll just okay, cool. do the same thing. Cool. Um, we'll talk about certain ones. I'm not going to talk about the history of movies because obviously that's right. boring because the history of movies is like the first movie was a painting and then they oh. started putting a bunch of paintings together, making them go really fast. And they're like, oh, it's a movie picture. And then they're like, well, we don't know how sound works. <laughs> boring. <laughs> Let me just say, everyone who was making movies like before the 30s and 40s, you guys sucked. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Calling it as she sees it. Okay. <laughs> just, they didn't even have them in color. <laughs> huh? Whatever. On that note, I legitimately <laughs> thought Wizard of Oz was they didn't discover color like the world. I just I I thought the world was black and white. Until Wizard of Oz. I think that's like pretty common nowadays. Okay, with like cool. Kids being like, oh yeah, when did they invent color? Because pictures yeah. like, yeah, don't have them. But like, obviously, like little kids, like, right, right. Um, so for the cult classic list, I went to the deep dives of white boy internet to find what was considered <laughs> <laughs> a cult classic. <laughs> and then I ignored a lot of the suggestions and went with the only ones I fair. liked. <laughs> That's completely fair. So I wrote down the ones I'd hoid of before. Yes. <laughs> Which is actually so Makes it more fun list. to talk about. Yeah. And I have them kind of in different categories. So the first one I'm going to go through is comedies. Oh, um, give it to me. And here's what I wrote for comedies. Um, we have, starting with some Monty Python movies. Yes. I have Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And Top. Monty Python's Life of Brian. Oh. So, now, Life of Brian is one that I have watched over and over as a kid. And I don't know a lot of people who watched it because most people love to quote Holy Grail. Um, I see. And Holy Grail was then made a musical like Spam a lot is was a Tony winner. So but Life of Brian was pretty funny because it was about a guy who was born in Jerusalem and he was born. So, you know how. Um, like in the Bible. Jesus is born in like a manger and like there are like three wise men who come. So in Life of Brian, Brian is born in like the manger next to Jesus. And he <laughs> <laughs> No <laughs> his manger gets mistaken at first and the like the, the 
the wise men come and they're like, oh, the Lord and Savior. And his mom's like, oh, yeah, come on in. Well, I just had a baby. Come on and sit down. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And they're all like, what are you going to name him? And she's like, oh, I think I'll name him Brian. <laughs> And they're all, oh, Aww. that's not the name that was prophesied. This must not be the right guy. And then they see, like, the north, like, the star shining on the major across the way. And they're all, oh, give me back my myrrh, my gold, my frankincense, and go over here. And so, basically, then this guy's whole life, Brian's whole life, goes through, like, is not basically, being... he's the doppel, like, the like, doppelganger, he's, like, he's yeah. like Kirkland Brand Jesus, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, no, no, I'm not him, and everyone like thinks he's like a savior, so they like are following him like a cult leader, and he ends up being, um, at the end of the movie, he is like on the cross, and oh some, god, and um, it's like by mistake, like he's not supposed to be, but he gets put up on the cross by mistake because they thought he was Jesus. But then they come and they're like, oh, sorry, we have the wrong guy. We're supposed to take Brian. Which one are you is Brian? And so everyone who's sitting on a cross, there's like a bunch of people on a cross and they're all, I'm Brian. No, I'm Brian. No, I'm Brian. I'm Brian. And then one guy's oh. like, I'm Brian. And my wife's name's Brian too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, upset. I have never seen this and I'm going to watch it later. Yeah. Um, because that sounds hilarious. <laughs> the next movies I have on my list of comedies is Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, oh! Remember that guy? I feel like just good call. On I the feel. Classic. I feel like um, this is made some people's list of cult classics, but then yeah, some people I feel like um. In order to like qualify as a cult classic, they want it to not be like really popular when it came out. Uh huh. And I kind of feel like Napoleon Dynamite was kind of popular when it came out. It was. But then I remember I was in junior high when it came mm -hmm. out, which means same. It was popular in junior hires. When it came out. <laughs> Maybe I don't know how it did amongst the average moviegoer. <laughs> True. I'm, I'll look up how it did in the box office. All of my ahead. friends definitely went and saw it. And right? definitely would not shut up about it afterward. Um, and that actually has one of my favorite movie mistakes in it that you can catch when he's waiting for the bus, you guys. This is a fun fact. When Napoleon's waiting for the bus and it drives by, in the reflection of the windows and the door on the bus, you can actually see the entire film crew behind Napoleon. So next oh. time you watch it, look for that scene. You'll see the film crew. It's pretty interesting. Cool. <laughs> it's got a 6.9 out of 10 on IMDb, 72% on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, I think a lot of other cult classics are still now considered like have higher scores now right. from before when right. they came out because they typically right. are like not popular with mainstream at first right there was one that i went read about the boondock saints do you mm. familiar i've heard that? of it never seen so it though. theatrical release was like a total flop and it apparently was like the studios were like trying to suppress it and they like only opened it in like five theaters in america and for like a week and they closed it. So they were like really Whoa. trying to do it bad. And then apparently Blockbuster uh, signed an agreement or a contract with them to do a release straight to video. And then people renting huh. it at home is what made it really popular. Interesting. So, hmm. yeah. So not every cult classic is um, a hit, you know, or most cult classics actually in order to even be a cult classic, it's not a hit in theaters um, right but it's really loved by a particular group um, interesting so yeah anyway skipping around but back to my comedy list <laughs> i have wet hot american summer which is one of my favorite cult classics um that is amy poehler's very first movie she was in it but it was like written and oh. directed by david wayne and michael showalter and Michael Ian Black, those three people were um, 
also the comedy masterminds behind Stella, which is a little <laughs> like almost like a cult classic comedy trio that not a lot of people heard of, but it's like an old YouTube mm-hmm. videos and like stand up stuff. And they had a mm. Comedy Central special for or TV show for one season too. But what Hot oh American gosh. Summer was their like probably most popular movie, um, even though it is still considered like a cult classic. I think it has so many big names in it too. Like before they were popular, Bradley Cooper's in it. Um, really? Yeah, he plays. Wow. Um, a gay lover to Michael Ian Black. They get married in the movie at summer camp. They're like camp oh. counselors. They're teenage the camp counselors who get married at summer camp. <laughs> How old was Bradley Cooper? Oh my god. Yeah, look it up. Um and then they even did a Netflix reboot in 2015. So this movie came out in like the 80s or 90s, I want to say. Yeah, 81. 81? Oh dang, it's that old? No, no. It can't be that old. No, sorry. Summer of 81. Summer of 81. Oh, oh, it didn't ba- come out in 81. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's based in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. My bad. Paul Rudd is in it. Oh, my Paul God. Paul Rudd. Um, I'm going to look it up, too. Hold on. Because they came out in 2015 with a Netflix special that's like a prequel. Um, and, oh, so it came out in 2001. My bad, my bad. So not the 90s, but really close. Yeah. Um, it has David Hyde Pierce in it, who is from Frasier. And I he see. was like the most popular one there. Um, it's got a 38% of Rotten <laughs> Tomatoes. <laughs> wow. That movie is like, every scene is like stupider than the last. Like Paul Rudd's character lets a kid drown because he's like making out with Elizabeth Banks. It's like <laughs> stop. Um, oh, no. But it's like really funny. <laughs> it looks familiar. It is definitely played on my TV when I was younger. Yeah, sure. and honestly, it's one of those movies where even though you can't name everyone in the movie, every single face in the movie, you're like, I know who that is. I've seen them. Yeah, it's something else, you know. Yeah. Oh, my God. Paul Rudd's character. Oh, my God. I'm watching it later. <laughs> I'll probably watch it again, too, tonight, because it's so funny. And if it's not on Netflix anymore, definitely watch the Netflix series Wet Hot American Summer First Day of Camp, because that is, like, just as funny to me. Okay. And they all okay. are, like, obviously, like, 20 years older, so they're all, like, in their 40s. And they're like, wow, we're 17. We're so young. <laughs> <laughs> We're so young. Oh, so, no. And Amy Poehler's in it and everything. I love her so much. Yeah. Um, next, I have Spinal Tap and Best in Ooh. Show. So these are, have you seen these movies? Mm-mm. Christopher Guest and his group of comedian friends basically have made several mockumentary series and the first one was called this is spinal tap and this little spinal tap is about it's very very like it's giving tenacious d because they're this like metal rock band that's like this 80s hair rock and uh, (laughs) but the movie is set when they're kind of like past their prime and they're kind of washed up and so they think they're these big rock stars but they're actually like (laughs) (laughs) but they live and they embody their rock star like and i just remember one scene always sticks out to me because i kind of quote this all the time um in my head but (laughs) (laughs) they like want to put out an album cover and it's like of a girl on a leash or something and their producer's like you can't do this that's sexist and they're all what's wrong with being sexy (laughs) (sighs) <laughs> so no. sometimes I say, "What's wrong with being sexy?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they actually also like Tenacious D. Actually, toured even though they're in Tenacious D. Jack Black and Kyle Gass do kind of play themselves. Spinal Tap. They're Michael McKeon, um, Christopher Guest, and Harry Shear, who's mm-hmm. like from The Simpsons. They actually play their characters. So they would go around and tour and do concerts as Spinal Tap, Spinal Tap 
in their characters. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, How funny. And then after Spinal Tap, then they came out with Best in Show, which is like, this was came out then years later. And Best in Show was more of like a dog, is like a dog show. So each character is like a different like owner of a dog. And in that one, then they add like to the, <laughs> to the group, they have um, Parker Posey, Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, um, Jane Lynch, John Michael Higgins, just so many like big names in yeah. comedy. Just and faces, that group yeah. kind of went on to make more. They did A Mighty Wind. They did Waiting for Guffman, which is this really funny movie about a community theater group that's like putting on a show that's about the history of their town, but it's kind of <gasps> based on the show Waiting for Godot. So they think that there's this big producer that's going to come see them and they <laughs> never show up, but they're... Um, who else is in it? Fred Willard was a huge one in this group, too, before he passed away. Wow. So, yeah, a lot of, like, good comedies from this little group that I would consider wow. cult classics. Um, and then we're moving on into more of, like, action comedy genre. Okay. So then I have Raising Arizona and The Big Lebowski. Have you seen these? Oh, I've seen bits and pieces of The Big Lebowski, but not Raising Arizona. So directed by the Cohen brothers, both of them, and they, um, they're they both just these kind of like weird feeling-ish, mostly action, but they're comedy in like a weird sense. Like, they're not ha-ha funny, but they like make you feel funny. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, Big Lebowski is one of my favorite movies, I think, because the dude is like... Um, I don't know, a role model for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like everything no, I, I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that hard. I Especially because I just watched it, like, the beginning of it recently. Uh-huh. So, I get um, that. Raising Arizona was actually, though, the first movie they that the Coen brothers did before Big Lebowski. And mm -hmm. it's about a like con man like a con mm, i don't know what it's what to say i like think a, a con man is right con man like a convict he's mm -hmm. he he's not really a con man though like i wouldn't say that he's like a smart guy he just like always is getting in trouble with the law and getting arrested i see um but they're always like petty crimes because he's like always in and out of jail and he ends up falling in love with his wife because she's like the guard who takes his picture every time mm -hmm. and they get married and they can't have kids and so she sees a news article about like the rich people the rich family in town had like quintuplets and they're like oh, oh well they wow. have way more than they need so let's steal one of their babies <laughs> wow um and then he ends up having like going on this adventure like stealing this baby and you have to send me your list because i need <laughs> to watch these yeah i really do so this movie has nicholas cage in it and i at first was like mm, don't know how i'm gonna feel about a nicholas cage movie we never know what's 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 gonna be right he's a wild right. card for everything he does is a wild card yeah halfway through this movie i'm forgetting it's even nicholas cage though like Really? It's just his character. So Interesting. Mind you, this was a long time ago, and I think probably before he was, like, famous for being crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So then the next movie I have on the list is The Princess Bride. Yes. Which, yes, a million times. This is one that I want to ask. If they did a remake... Or a sequel. <sighs> what would you... Who would you want to see in it? Oh, God. Um, I want to hear your answers first while I'm thinking of mine. Okay. Okay. Because that's going to take me a minute. Because I... I don't know where I read this or saw it on a video somewhere. But saw somebody talking about if they did a remake of this, uh -huh. they should do it where Fred Savage is grown up and the dad and his daughter oh. is sick and he is reading her the story 
Um, I see. He's like, oh, my grandpa used to read this to me when I was sick, and he reads it to her. So then the whole story is from her imagination. So Got what it. she would be imagining everyone looks like. You know what I mean? That's really neat <laughs> to think of it that and way. I'm like, yeah. I would love that. I don't remember where I saw that, but I do think that would be such a good idea. Oh my God. If so, oh my God. Nobody can compare to Carrie Ells. Do you pronounce it? Yeah, do, I was going to say, Carrie how do you pronounce Yules. his name? Elwes. Carrie Ells. Elwes. Yeah. Nobody can compare to him. I just, I love his humor and his wit. You know what? This might be a little like left field. Uh-huh. But I feel like um gosh, what's his name? Uh hold on. He's on he was a doctor on Doctor Who. David Tennant? No, not da- David Tennant would be good though. Benedict no, Cumberbatch? I'm- no. <laughs> <laughs> No, what's his name? Damn it. Um, it's it's uh <laughs> Matt Smith. I think mm. it's pushing it. I know it's left field, but mm. same okay. wit and same humor. I'm just saying. Okay. It would work. Okay. But I, I I know a lot of people would be like, um, he's not that handsome, but he can be. Okay. I was thinking, um, I don't know, like, what the age range it, it, it should be. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. I also think if um, current Spider-Man, <sighs> the sweetheart kid, like, he's... Tom Holland? Like, feel like he might be a really cute... Yeah. A really cute... Uh, Who would I Wesley. put as Buttercup? Doja Cat. No questions. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Girl, Doja Cat is bae. Because <laughs> oh everyone thinks she's hot. And she has to be the yep. most beautiful person in the world. So, duh. <laughs> duh. <laughs> yes. Maybe if Matt Smith was a little bit younger. Oh, wait. Who's the guy from you? Yeah, he could be a Wesley. I don't find him attractive. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Never I mind. Mean, never mind. <laughs> abort. Abort. But I feel like he could probably act it well, really well. Who else could be Buttercup? Ariana Grande. <gasps> <gasps> yes, please. She'd be cute, too. Oh, my yeah. God. I would love that. Oh, ow. And then, ow. of course, the little guy who's um, the Sicilian little guy. Uh-huh. Um, I would make Ben Platt. <laughs> <laughs> so that he could be a more age appropriate role. A <laughs> girl throw that shade. <laughs> I'm curious. I don't know. What you see that oh my gosh. I want to move on. I want to move on. So then some okay. other cult classics that I have. I'm just going to spit fire. Okay. Mars Attacks. <sighs> Yes. Loved that movie when it came out. Thought it was Mm -hmm. the perfect mix of funny and scary. Yes. The Room. You heard of that movie? No. So it's well known for Mm. being historically the worst movie ever made. Really? And if you you just watch like clips of it. Oh, no. Uh-huh. It is so awful. Tommy Wiseau is the director, and he's also starring in it, and he talks like this the whole time, and it's really bad. (laughs) I have heard of this. I've never seen it, but I have heard how bad the acting was. So, yeah, so now it's, like, studied in film classes as, like, the worst movie ever, and it has a cult following of people who will have, like, the room watching parties so that they can laugh at it and, like, throw spoons at their TV. I love that. Yeah. Next movie, Fight Club. Apparently that's a cult classic, but we're not allowed to talk about it. Moving on. Donnie Darko. (laughs) Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko starring the now infamous Jake Gyllenhaal, which brings us to our (laughs) next cult classic, the all too well short film by Taylor Swift. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Damn, the shade is thrown today. I love it. Um, it's not really shade, but I feel like no, no. Um, we're just having just like a nice breezy day. Yeah. <laughs> um, next movie Some I have shame. on my list is Being John Malkovich, which I didn't watch until my adult life. Um, I watched it like last year, and. Uh. I'm looking I, these up as you tell me because I want to see what it looks like. I think that it was from the same director, Christopher Nolan, who did um, that movie we talked about on the podcast. What was it called? Which one? Which movie? I'm thinking of ending things. Oh, okay. Um, so he did this other one, being John Malkovich. So you know how that's like all creepy and like weird, like mind trippy. Same thing yeah. with being John Malkovich, but it was like honestly so bad. Like, I hated that really? so much. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, like, it didn't make sense, or it was just poorly, like, directed, or? Both. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. It was kind of, um, yeah, just dumb. I just hated it. I just didn't like it at all. There's nothing oh, no. particular except just the whole thing. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. It looks and then, interesting. And then I have my last group of cult classic which is musicals um uh so we have music hairspray which kind of oh. is actually a double cult classic because i think both movies count as a cult classic the original movie which was uh -huh. just the movie hairspray it wasn't it wasn't really technically a musical but then they came out with the musical movie and i think they both kind of count because they oh, both wow. were like not that popular amongst mainstream audiences, but amongst their own like fans, like mm -hmm. super, super um, highly regarded. The other one I have written down is Cry Baby, which is like the same direct. I think Cry Baby was the same director as the original Hairspray. Although, don't come for me at that one because I don't. <laughs> I'm not for sure, um, but it's definitely like the same style. And for me, I conflate them because I watched them at around the same time growing up. Uh huh. Um. My next one I have is Little Shop of Horrors oh. with Rick Moranis. I love mm, him. I do, too. I love him, too. <laughs> one of my favorite actors as a kid, and pretty much anything he's in, I love him in it. So, <laughs> uh, And also Steve Martin is the dentist in that movie um, in Little Shop of Horrors. I didn't know that. Yeah, so... Wow. Yeah, a little fun fact. Um, the next one I have is probably oh, one. Yeah, right. So the next one I have was a rock opera that came out when I was in um, college mm -hmm. called Repo, the Genetic Opera. Oh, my. Oh, my. And this is a fun one that I do want to talk a little bit about because yes. it's starring... Um, Alexa Vega. Uh-huh. Who is from Spy Kids. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. We talked about that. Yes. That's right. Um, and who now I think is involved with like a multi-level marketing company. So I don't know. Stop. I don't know one hundred I don't know one hundred percent about that. So don't quote me on that. But, yeah. <laughs> so it starts so she's like the main daughter in it and so okay. this world repo the genetic opera is set in like this futuristic society where um people who need organ transplants like if they can't afford oh, it uh -huh. they end up like having to take out loans but then if they can't pay it off a repo man actually comes and takes their organs out and kills them. Um, and at the same time, there's like all the rich people are like super addicted to like unnecessary plastic surgeries and stuff like to the oh, point okay. where it's like, so this, the whole medical system is like super fucked up and it's like, um, you know, kind of a comment on where we could be going with how little people care about, um, <laughs> Yeah. Actually providing health care for citizens. But um, so basically, Alexa Vega sings this solo. 
<laughs> about how she's infected because her mom gave her this genetic disease and now she's not allowed to ever go out into the real world but i think the truth is that if she goes into the real world she'll know that her dad is actually the repo man and he's like not really like just this nice doctor that he says he is or something i don't know paris hilton is also in it oh, that's she, right i was gonna say something about that <laughs> she <laughs> has a scene where she's like singing this like opera and her face ends up falling off like because she's like addicted to plastic <laughs> surgery and it's like gone too far oh god this movie has so much and sarah brightman is in it who was the original christine in phantom of the opera oh, this movie funny. has so much like cult classic elements to it and then it's all wrapped up in this like goth wrapping paper with this like edgy rock bow to top off i I think it's probably one of the most uncomfortable I've ever been watching a movie, if I'm being oh, wow. honest. And I will never watch it again. But it has Paul Sorvino in it. The people who love this movie <laughs> really love this movie. And I think it's because it is kind of like this generation's version of what. And this will be the finale, the last movie on my list, the last cult classic, is um, mm -hmm. what Repo would be this generation's version of Rocky Horror Picture Show. So I think that when you hear the name cult classic, the very first movie you think of is Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. this movie is literally like... When it came out, it was a total flop from mainstream audiences. The Christian um, Americans wanted it to basically not exist. They were like, if yeah. we could have a book burning for this movie, we would. Yeah. Um, and the select fans that loved it ended up just keeping it alive. Like, they were the life support for this movie that kept pumping Honestly. this to keep um to become like basically how well known it is today and these fans would go right. watch these midnight showings completely dressed up as characters they would bring like sex toys and yeah like <laughs> the whole nine like noodles or something things to throw <laughs> yeah this Someone is like tomatoes i heard of some like group there was a group that i knew long before I even knew theater was a thing that mm -hmm. would bring tomatoes to one showing. And it was, it was a huge deal. Like, yes, in my childhood. And so I think that's what really made like the idea of a cult following really popular. And nowadays, just like having something that you can be that like much of a fan of, like having something that you can have such a big. Yeah. I don't know what, for exactly. And mm -hmm. it, it really fits so well into who you are that you feel like it is yeah. such a big part of you because it made you see the world in such a different way. And yeah. it made you feel something that nothing else has before. That's and I a think beautiful that's way to put that. I think that's what's really what makes all these cult classics like what makes them similar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What they all mm -hmm. have in common is that they they really do that for a certain, for people. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. it's not something that's just gonna relate to everybody because that never really relates to you deep in your soul. You know what I mean? It's the right. things that like most people aren't really gonna get, but for some reasons, somebody who's on the same wavelength as you created this thing and you watched it and you're like, I love this. I'm all about mm -hmm. this. This is amazing. And I think mm -hmm. having that kind of fandom in your life is just so fun. And especially for like the geeks and the nerds of us out there who want to have something like this to cling on to because, you know, maybe our relationships with other people aren't as um, understandable. Exactly. Like we don't get those as much. <laughs> That's I mean, the, the <laughs> amount of face value you get from people can give you a lot of insight to how you feel right off the bat. I know judging a wow, judging, judging, judging a judging. book by its cover. <laughs> it's not, it's not a way to go, but you're right. Like it's, it's what 
it's what it does for you at the end of the day that drives that passion. Absolutely. You said that so well. And I also have to, uh, full confession, uh, I thought cult classics meant genuinely. I thought it just meant things and movies in particular that people just absolutely found a fandom with. Oh, uh huh. That people were just obsessed with. Not not that it flopped from the get go when it went mm. out, and I I didn't know that part. I really. think like having a cult following is different now because back when cult classic term was like created Mm -hmm. for a movie that was really popular in the mainstream really didn't have a grip on like a following that was also very cultish. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like nowadays um, things like Harry Potter and then star Wars, like originally star Wars was like only for nerds, but now it's so mainstream and popular that it's kind of both. And Harry Potter True. is like, it's kind yeah. of both. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's weird to like. It, That's crazy I, when you put that into perspective. Yeah, because like now, that. Things, now things are mainstream and have a cult following. And it's not one yeah. or the other like how it was before. But yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Anyways. <gasps> oh, is that the end? Yeah, I really? guess we're done talking about. I guess we're done with season one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, what yeah <sighs> well since this is our, our last episode in season one technically mm-hmm. please let us know your favorite cult classic and yes your favorite video game what video game brought you into the video game world yes tell um, us um I know there are so many cult classics that I didn't even mention, too. Yeah. There are so many. And I didn't even brush the horror genre. Oh, that's just true. too many. So true. comment us, email us, yep. any your favorites, what you want us to talk about. And next season, we are going to be diving into some more clicks and flicks, guys. And you know what? We... There have been certain requests and they are in the queue for yes. sure. And also to keep in touch with us when we're going to be starting the next season, mm-hmm. follow our socials, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. We're there. We may not post every day, but yeah. we're there. We're on uh, all the cool we- ones. So don't look on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> don't look on Facebook. Yeah. Don't even bother. With don't Facebook. even bother with Facebook. We're on all the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> we will hint and definitely let you know when we're going to start up season two. Yes. That'll be a good time. Just look forward to it next year. We can't wait. Thank you guys so much for yeah. listening and watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll catch you on the clickety flick side. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Peace out, motherfuckers. (laughs) Peace and love.